So I've been meaning to do this video for ages. It's a really simple one. It's revolving around this thing, which is a square probe. Uh, and it's used for measuring the resistance of uh, thin films, sputter coatings, ink coatings, paint coatings, that kind of thing. And I've used this quite a lot. A lot of people have said to me, how did you make it? So the plan of the video is to explain it a little bit, and then to show you how to make it, and then we'll use it to take some sheet resistance measurements. So the first question really is, what is sheet resistance? And in order to think about sheet resistance, we want to know about resistance per se. Now, resistance is a property of a material dependent on the geometry of the material, because resistance is equal to rho, which is the resistivity. Now, rho is an intrinsic property of all materials. It's the resistivity of the materials. But when we're using an actual material and taking the resistance of it, we have a lump of something of a certain size, and it will affect the resistance, but not the resistivity. So the resistance is equal to the resistivity times the length divided by the area because we're looking at a block of material. This block of material has an area of some kind of length. And those geometrical factors will affect the resistance of the overall block of material that you're using. Now, when you're measuring resistance of a block of material, what you do is take one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, slap on a couple of copper plates, and take the resistance at the end of those copper plates. And that's how resistance of bulk materials is measured. Now, it doesn't quite apply when we're looking at sheets. Now, sheets are taken to be of uniform thickness. But when we're looking at a sheet, we're looking at a big old plane of something, the tiny thickness that has some length, some width, and a thickness of T. So when we measure this resistance here, what we're doing is measuring a sheet. So we can say that our resistance now becomes rho length over width times T, and that's how we're measuring it. If we separate these out, so we get rho Oops, over T times LW, then that becomes RS, which is the sheet resistance, length over W, which is our resistance. And if these are equal, so this is 10 and this is 10 and this is 8 and this is 8, then these cancel out to give us R is equal to RS where Rs is equal to rho over t. So equally, if we take Rs figure and we multiply that by the thickness, what we get is the resistivity of the material that we've been looking at. So that's how we can use sheet resistivity, but sheet resist, I'm sorry, sheet resistance. But how do you actually measure sheet resistance? Now, sheet resistance has to be on a film of uniform thickness. So there's an assumption there's a uniform thickness and there's a couple of methods used. One is the Van der Poel method, which is a four-point probe method. And that can be a little complicated and expensive for people to set up. So another method is to attach bus bars with an ohmic contact where the bus bar length is equal to the width of the sheet that you're uh, measuring. So what I'm saying here is if we stick a bus bar on here and here and we make sure that those are the same distance apart as the length, what we effectively get is a sheet resistance probe. Now, that's exactly what this is. These are two copper bus bars, and they're held apart by the same as the length of the bus bar. So when I use that, what I'm actually doing is taking a sheet resistance using bus bars with ohmic content along the edge of the width of the square. Now when I do that, the measurement that I get, so RS, is measured in ohms square. So it's ohm square ohm per square. And that's the measurement of RS. So now we've quickly gone through the theory, let's go off and make one of these. So as we pointed out on the board, one of the curious things about sheet resistance is it doesn't matter how big the square is that you make, because we divide length by width as part of the equation. So as long as the length and the width are identical, that is, it's a square, then the size of the square is completely unimportant. So you could do one centimetre if you like, you could do ten centimetres, you could do a hundred centimetres. It really doesn't matter, as long as the length and the width are the same. So what we're looking for is some materials to make our bus bars, because we're using the bus bar method as opposed to the Van der Power method. So we need something to make our bus bars, and of course there's nothing better than copper. Now we can get a lot of copper from all over the place, and I just so happen, so just so happen to have a bit of this. This is a bit of old lightning conductor, it's a solid uh, copper rod covered by a plastic casing, 
I had a length of this from somewhere and I'm going to use that to make my uh, probe with. Now, um, this is scrap, but you can buy this stuff in the bar that you see here and use it nice and clean. We're using scrap, so we're going to have to clean it up. The other thing I'm going to use once I've cut the sizes uh, is a piece of this stuff. This is builder's board. I'll cut the square out of this that I want, allowing for the thickness of the bus bar. So I put the two bus bars together, then they'll be held apart by the same distance that they are long. And that's the basis of my square probe. Now in order to get something nice and easy so that I can put the um, probe tips in from the meter and screw them down and get a good contact, I'm going to use this to make some contact. So I'll cut the brass bits out of here, flatten the edge, solder them onto here, and then I can drop my contacts from my meter into there, screw them tight, and I'll have myself a square probe. So that's what we're going to do. Now to do that, we need a uh, cutting implement for the builder's board, which is a poly, uh, polyurethane with a PVC covering, so a trimming knife blade, a carpet knife will do very nicely. Uh, we need a square edge, we need a uh, angle, a nice triangle there so we get nice square edges, mark a pen, our materials that we've got. Remember this edge is straight, so we'll be going from this edge in all our cutting and measurement. We're going to be working with metal, so we need a uh, hacksaw, flat file, some wire wool to clean everything up, and then we have some soldering equipment there. So we, that's the equipment we're going to need, there's the materials we're going to work on. What we're going to do is cut that to length, clean it, solder on these, cut that board to length, glue it together with some super glue, and we'll have our basic probe. So let's get on with that. What's important about this is the distance apart is equal to the length. In this case, it's 50 millimeters. Now, I used a bit of builder's board and some um, copper lightning rod, but you can use whatever you like. You can use a bit of brass if you can find that, a bit of copper if you can find that. If you can't find builder's board, use a bit of wood, something that's insulating to hold that distance apart. So it really doesn't matter what it is that you use. What matters is that we can make a nice contact along this edge, a so-called ohmic contact. Uh, no contact means that there's um, no PN junctions, no shock barriers, nothing like that. There's good contact between two conductors, so that's going to be uh, no oxides, a nice firm contact, uh, as little ridging as you can get. So we need to be able to make an ohmic contact between what we're measuring and our probe in order to use this bus bar method. Um, but that's it, that's it finished, so all we have to do really is connect a meter to that and then press that onto something to get a square resistance reading. Now I'm obviously putting the screws back in because I made this one bit of terminal block so that I could hold the meter in there. Then what we're going to measure is this thing here on the bench and that thing is a, a piece of graph oil. It's about a hundred micrometers thick piece of graph oil and we're going to measure whatever the uh, square resistance of that is. And equally remember that size of the square just doesn't matter as long as it's square and that's why. So if you remember the math on the board then that should help. And the reason we put these terminal blocks in because it's really awkward trying to hold everything together. 
So if we just put the probes in there and tighten that down, then we get a nice contact here as well, and we'll get a good reading from that. Oh, incidentally, I just super glued those together. The super glue is fine. Once the super glue is dried on this builder's board, it's actually really, really strong. It's stronger than the original plastic, in fact. Turn our meter on. Set it to an ohms reading. Pop that on, and we will get a square resistance reading. Now then, we've got a square resistance reading of that of uh, 1.6, if you can see that, it's 1.6 ohms a square, that's what we're getting from this piece of graph oil here. Now, the contact may not be brilliant, so we can put a clamp on there just to squeeze that contact down a bit more tightly, uh, it's now reading 1.3 incidentally, and um, if we get a good contact there we should find out that that's around about an ohm a square, which is about right for this piece of material. Anyway, I've been promising to do that for absolutely ages. Uh, there is a square resistant probe based on the bus bar method, how to make it, and some of the math on why it actually works. I hope that was of interest to you. I'm sorry it took me so long to make the video. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching.